Hello all you hardcore boxing fans, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. And I am in hog heaven. Hog heaven today. All on my own yet again. Billy no mates. Right, straight down to business. No messing about. Let's have a look. Let's have a look what we're going to do. Let's see which way we're going to... Uh, I think we're going to go down the route of fighters who have crossed the streets. In other words, do you want to be in my gang? No, I want to be in somebody else's gang. Somebody must have said something to Billy Joe Saunders for him to leave Frank Warren but is Billy Joe Saunders the only fighter in history that's he's left he's left one outfit and gone to another in the boxing industry we call it crossing the street now you've heard the term turning over well that's when you turn professional you've heard the term down the line well that's when you'll fight somebody further down the line when it's more beneficial for you. In other words, when that fight's bigger or when that person's got more miles on the clock, that's down the line. This one is called crossing the street. Now, I could tell you fighters that have crossed the street, Eubank and Ben, they're both with Frank Warren, then Eddie Hearn, sorry, Barry Hearn, then back to Frank. You know, I'm not saying that fighters are prostitutes. I'm not, because they're the ones in the ring. But you've got to understand the fighter has to get it right. If Liverpool get beat on a Monday, in Champions League on a Monday night football game when they defend the Champions League, a couple of weeks later they'll get to play in Champions League, Champions League again to put that right. If Anthony Joshua loses his title to Ruiz, he might not get another chance to put it right. Because they're not going to want to hand them belts back, are they? This is where boxing needs to be governed. It's like you fail a drug test, but if you've got a lot of money and good lawyers, nobody even knows about it. How many fighters is there out there that have failed drug tests that we don't know about? Has Mayweather failed one? He's big news, isn't he? As Manny Pacquiao, he's big news. As Joshua, he's big news. We're already hearing that they've all had TUAs, therapeutic use exemptions. That's just allegedly. Now, those three fighters there, Manny Pacquiao, massive megastar, got a country behind him, Mayweather, he's got Vegas behind him. And Anthony Joshua, do you know what I mean? So, Michelle, can I phone you back? So I'm filming. All right, I won't be long. Uh, I could have gone to my other office up at Dennis's, but I prefer Den's office. It's a bit darker than my office up there. I could be up there in that office there, but I prefer it down here. I've got more room, haven't I? But uh, but no, getting back to that. Manny Pacquiao does loads of buys, Mayweather does loads of buys. Google Manny Pacquiao, Wikipedia, go down and look at it. He has generated, is it just under two billion? Two billion. Mayweather, look what he's generated. Joshua, look what he's generated. Canelo, these people, nobody's going to rock their boats, are they? Your Canelos, your Joshuas, your Manny Pacquiao's, your Mayweather's. Nobody's going to rock their boat. Dillian White, he's just getting there, isn't he, to that level. He's, he's, Brit he's won a British title fight, a vacant belt against Ian Lewinson. And he's not world title fights back. 
And he'll regret that for the rest of his life now because he may never get a title shot now in his life. You'll see stories about Dillian White if it goes bad for him in 10 years in Ring Magazine with a question mark about what could have been. Badly advised in my opinion. But let's hope he comes through it all because I don't like to see anybody out of work. But fighters, getting back to the video that I'm doing now, so it was good on other avenues. Fighters that cross the street. Frank Bruno, Mickey Duff, Terry Lawless, Frank Warren, Barry Hearn. The high noon fight didn't happen after the weigh-in in America. Barry Hearn pulled the plug. Everybody then went back to uh, Frank Warren. They all crossed the street, all of them. Uh, so that, would be, that basically took Barry Hearn out of the game in boxing. He got involved with an American guy. Google it. Google High Noon. The High Noon show with Barry Hearn. Ray Mercer against Frank Bruno. There were, I think, Steve Collins on the show. Herbie Hyde, Frank Bruno, all of them. The show got pulled by Barry Hearn after the weigh-in. Got pulled. Now, that's when Barry Hearn bailed out of boxing around about that time. That's what happens. Do you know what I mean? That's what happens. It's just one of them things. That's when he got rid of Herbie Hyde's heavyweight title. One minute you've got Eubank and Herbie Hyde, next minute you've got nobody. That's how boxing can turn. The landscape always changes. Frank Warren knows this. Barry Hearn knows this. Barry Hearn knows that he has got so long to get as much money as they can outside of Joshua because other than that, who has he really got that's going to be on Joshua's level? Not many. But the stable is still very, very strong and they're still the number one outfit in boxing in my opinion. But fighters do cross the street and I've just said here, Ben, Eubank, Bruno, Chisora, Frank Bruno, uh, sorry, Frank Warren, and now it earns, isn't he? Nathan Cleverly, Ricky Burns, they were with Frank, Frank Warren. They finished their career with Eddie Hearn. Carl Frock started with Mick Hennessy, finished with Eddie Hearn. Bell Yu, he was with Frank Warren, finished with Eddie Hearn. Tyson Fury and Huey Fury started with Mick Hennessy. Darren Barker, finished with Eddie Hearn. Well, he was still starting, isn't he? Savannah Marshall, she we had the urn, she didn't start out with Eddie. Eddie didn't want to know. Mick Hennessy's done all the heavy lifting, hasn't he? With Barker, both Furies, Frotch, Savannah Marshall, Mick Hennessy's done the heavy lifting. Mike Tyson, you know, he, he was with Jim Jacobs, he went with Don King, then he went with somebody else, didn't he? Working with Shelley Finkel and other people. These sort of things happen, don't they? Mayweather started with Bob Arum, then, then left. Oscar Delaroy, he was with, May, he was with Arum and he left. Holyfield, he's been with Lou Duva, main events and them, and he's been with Don King. You know, it, it, the list goes on. Clinton Woods, they're not all like Clinton Woods. Are they? This is why Clinton Woods gets a lot of respect. He started with Dennis Hobson, British Commonwealth, European, world champion, got out of boxing, millionaire, set up for life, he's got his own gym, he's got a few quid, lives in a big posh cottage. You, you might see him odd time in chip shop up there, just a normal bloke, just a normal bloke. Uh, just a normal bloke, drives the BMW, private plate, N1, WBC. Dennis bought him that when he got to be number one with WBC. I wonder what that plate's worth now. You know, th there's, there's that element of loyalty. He went with Dennis. He were an amateur. Dennis says, why don't you turn pro? He went pro with Dennis, fighting at the Pine Club. And he went all the way through levels, didn't he? All the way through area title. All the way through all the levels. They call it the six levels, don't they? Airy English, British, Commonwealth, European and World Champion. Went all the way through a lot. Although I don't think he won English. I don't think Billy won English as well, but Airy level then British. All the way through. Loyal, 
How many people, I mean we all say, oh he's wrong and he left so and so and so and so. What's the difference if, if you leave a job and it goes somewhere else? Nobody sticks it to you, you're trying to better yourself aren't you? So I need to stop with this mentality in my head saying, Den I can't talk to him, he backstabbed you. Because I have that problem with Jamie McDonald, I have a problem. Because I know what went down. But if you want to better yourself, well, why should I have that problem? I shouldn't, should I? I should get that out of my head. You know, I, I, I have chats all the time with, with people, with Terry and Mick Whale and people like that about things like this. It's just, I find it hard to understand how people can do what they do. But, like I said, fighters are going to, they're going to cross the road, aren't they, if they think that there's a few quid more. I mean, boxers and people who what? People who box. When they leave boxing, they could be a cut man, don't they, or a trainer, or open a gym, or they just disappear into obscurity. How many do you see working in a job? Errol Bomber Graham. Everybody used to kiss his ass when he was in Sheffield. Now, nobody even wants to raise any money for him, do they? Well, it's right, isn't it? Brendan Ingle sold his contract, didn't he, apparently, for £75,000 to Barney Eastwood. So... What did Bomber get out of that? I don't know. I don't know, but this is how I look at it. Boxing friendships always break up over money because fighters, they think they can go somewhere else and do better. It's always about money or egos. Fighters are very fragile, aren't they? But fighters who have crossed the street, I shouldn't take it as personal as I do. Because I'm the type of person who don't agree with anything like that. I think you should all be like Clinton Woods. When you're sat in there and you're patting somebody on the back and you're saying, this is my best friend and we're blood brothers and all this and that. And then as soon as an offer comes, you're off. You go, well, I thought we were blood brothers. Oh, no, I'm going to get twice as much money. And then they say, oh, it's business and it's that game as well. So I don't get involved in all that. I don't deal with any money situations. I have people ringing me today, can you get me on the show on the 20th of September? I said I'll ask, but Dennis says mum's dying at the moment, so he's, he's up at a deathbed. So it's not, it's not something that I'm going to push him on this week. But people want to come on shows and they're asking how much they're going to get. And I said, well... I, I don't like to talk that, it's my business to talk about money and stuff like that. Although I do always say, can you sell tickets? <laughs> I, I think that's just how it is. But, because it's, it's no secret that Ponds Ford, they're not selling out, are they? It's the wrong time of year. I'd like to see them, them sold out more, and I think that Dennis needs to promote himself more. I mean, I can't do it all, can I, with this channel? It'd be nice if you all could buy tickets and come to the show and build something with us because we're anti-establishment but it don't work like that does it not everybody can pull money up but at least the people in the area who can get to the show they should come and support these kids that are making the debuts and that are fighting you know there's Kane Salvin, Keenan Wainwright, Glen Rose Fighters there's a few other kids, Josh Whale, local kid, Barnsley Tyrone Nurse, others, others field Super Tommy Frank, Super Flyweight He's Sheffield lad, isn't he? Come and support these lads. Uh, get behind them. Go to, go to other shows as well. You, sh you should support boxing. Like I said earlier in the video, there's a lot of people who criticise boxing. But they're, they're like me in an armchair. But I'm in the thick of it on the front line trying to do my best. And I want people to come to these shows. Now, you come to these shows, it changes your life. Trust me, it changes your life, but... Fighters who have crossed the street, it's always going to happen. There's no I can do about it to stop it. Uh, it is what it is, isn't it? But it's always going to happen. And this is why I'm of the opinion that maybe if, maybe there's an element of truth with what Frank Warren said years ago. He says, fighters, you've got to treat them. What, what did he say now? You've got to treat them like a mushroom or something, you keep them in dark or, or you shit on them or something. Something like that. I forget what he said now, but 
I can see where Frank Warren's coming from because he's had people that have jumped ship on him, on him. and I can see where he's coming from. But he's also signed people from other people, and it it works both ways, doesn't it? If you're not keeping a fighter happy, well, you know, fighters are, are temperamental, aren't they, and fragile. They're the ones in the ring. You know, it's uh, it's an awful game, isn't it? And how I feel sorry for the promoters a little bit is this. For example, I always use this donor, Lee Purdy. Lee Purdy is an Essex boy. He ended up mates with Eddie Hearn. He fought on a show in New York. Barry Hearn had him in a sauna after, before weighing, sorry, trying to get the weight off him. And uh, he couldn't do it. Right, he could not do it, and the next day, is there a weigh-in the next day, a £10 thing? I'm not sure what happened, but I know he ended up getting a fine because he was in the sauna before the weigh-in. Now, Darren Barker pulled him out. He let him take an hammer in and pulled him out and said, he's my mate, he's my mate, like he did Dave Allen. Oh, pulling him out, he's my mate. Well, it had gone on too long, hadn't it? Dave Allen should have been pulled out after round seven because he clearly lost every round now he were never going to knock David Price out worrying he took a lot of hammering so round eight round nine and round ten is where I have a problem with Darren Barker because he's inexperienced to be having a fighter at that level Darren Barker got that position because he is Eddie Hearn's mate and he's married one of the matchroom staff so that's why Darren Barker got that Dave Allen but also Dave Allen put him in that position because me like a silly boy I said to him well look David you're going to need to let them know you're serious now that's what you've got to do after that Bracamante fight they dropped him off the Christmas card so you've got to let them know you're serious go get down with Adam Booth he's got Eddie Earns here or get him with Tony Sims Darren Barker let them know he ended up with Barker, didn't he? He didn't stick it with Adam Booth. Went to Darren Barker, but the camp, by the looks of it, he was in Steffi Bull's gym half at the time and up and down on, on trains and all that. I don't know what he did, to be honest, in it. I don't know. It was all a bit patchy, wasn't it? But he got the weight off, so just because you got the weight off, you think they've trained hard. But he won't throw in, don't worry. Even in round nine and round ten, he won't throw in anything, worry. So Darren Barker should have pulled him out after the seventh because he was never going to win the fight after the seventh, was he? He wasn't going to win that fight after the seventh. After the sixth round, you could make a case because Price were bound to win one more of the last six. But after the seventh, he'd lost all seven. It was clear he wasn't going to win. So I have a problem with that. But fighters cross the street. It's always going to happen. It always will. Right? There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to sit back and take it. But I like the romantic side of it. The fact that Dennis Hobson and Clinton Woods went all the way, didn't they? From signing paper. When Dennis had a gym that was 15 quid a week. And Clinton joined because he wanted to get rid of his beer belly because he was knocking everybody out in Roxy Nightclub in Sheffield. You know, that one opposite Crucible. So, I think that it's a great story. They don't see each other much now, but I think it's a great story and I think that everybody should be like that if they're earning. Clinton earned all the way through and he didn't leave, he was happy. Jamie McDonnell went there, eight and two on a draw. British Commonwealth European and world champion in a football stadium, 13 and 0 with Dennis, and he left. But he still earned money with Eddie, so he just still earned that with Dennis, so Dennis says. But the bottom line is, fighters jump the street. Josh Whale left Steffi Bull. He had his reasons for leaving Steffi Bull. He came to me and Dennis. So that's good, isn't it? Do I feel bad about that? Do I fuck? Excuse my English. No, I don't. I don't feel bad about it at all. No. It's business, isn't it? It's business. So am I hypocritical when I see it happen with other people? Yeah, you could say that. You could say that, but Josh's contract had come to an end, hadn't it? All but a month or so, all but all but a couple. His contract ended June, June fourth, I think. He came to Dennis at the end of April, so he was never going to fight with him anyway. So, did he do anything wrong technically, legally? 
no I just timed it right I was the driving force behind that not Josh not me not Dennis me why did I do that did I have beef with Steffi Bull maybe but we didn't need to fight did we I beat him in business didn't I so that's just what happens people cross me that's what happens you can't go around all, gun bl all guns blazing can you with these people in boxing industry you've got to think smart well, there's a few more smart things that are happening behind the scenes at the moment but we can't tell you everything not yet but fighters do cross the street and Steffi Bull will bounce back I'm sure Frank Warren will bounce back from losing Billy Joe Saunders deep down he will be seething just like Steffi Will Bull was Dennis was seething when McDonald went but McDonald got stripped didn't he a couple of weeks later of his belt and he never won a full world title belt after that did he so and Stewie Hall Dennis's fighter ended up with a belt so it swings and roundabouts I can assure you though sure as eggs are eggs Frank Warren who is a winner let me tell you he's a winner he's the comeback kid he's been shot He's had all sorts of problems, money problems, bankrupt and all sorts. He could survive a nuclear blast, he just won't go away, will he? He's like Michael Myers out Halloween. Frank Warren, as we speak now, will be plotting to get one back up on Billy Joe. It's human nature. We're humans, we're creatures of habit. It's what we do. So, like and subscribe, and you'll get your porky fix on your alert button on your phone. And you'll not miss anything then, will you? Because you can't beat a bit of porky. Keep on trucking. Oh, that reminds me. I better get... I'm going to have a workout now. So, keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. i put this on, it's dirty. It's a fantastic sport. And, uh, It's a sport like... Not like any other. Do you know what I mean? It's a sport unlike any other. And uh, it is what it is, isn't it? So I'm not going to take my trousers off in front of the camera, am I? So peace out. Keep on trucking. I'm going to try these gloves out again now. What did Dennis give me? All right, aren't they? Ten ounces. Ten ounces. Uh, all right. Oh, what we're, what we're doing? Another thing as well. I wanted to. Oh, I'll mention that in next video. So after I've had a workout. All right. Twenty-two minutes. My name is Tony Bellew, and I get my smile with calm dental.